Moshi Moshi. Hello. I'm Zeb Ramsbotham. And I'm Annie Ramsbotham. And we're the Rambling Ramsbothams. Our journey might be rambling, but we hope this podcast isn't. And today we have a plan. Yeah, so it's exciting. It's our first annual uh, anniversary episode. I don't know. I guess we'll do this for another year. Yeah, I mean, we'll be here for another year. <laughs> so I came to Japan on July 31st. At least that's what my passport says. So I landed on the 31st and... Yeah, and I came because of work. I came about a week later. So I think the 5th was my first day. So yeah, now we've officially been living here for a year, which is exciting. Yeah, so we're recording this on August 7th. So we made it to the the full year, which is pretty fun to think about that. I, like I've, I think maybe I mentioned this before on the podcast and I've told you about it before, but I have like a running tally in my head of how long I've been outside of the U.S. And before this, just because like traveling and trips in Europe and stuff, I think I was at like... 11 months 10 or 11 months and i was like really excited to hit the year mark so now i'm like almost a consecutive year yeah well so this episode we have some exciting stuff so we're gonna start with playing some of our favorite sounds from japan because i don't know when you live somewhere you know you think about all the different sensory parts about the things you see in that place and you smell and you eat and the things that you hear sometimes I think are overlooked so we've collected nine of our favorite sounds from Japan and we're going to play those for you and talk about them and then we're going to talk about a highlight from each month from the year and then the hardest parts about the year before finally wrapping it up with our words of the week so yeah some hopefully some fun things this hour well so to start with the sounds which sound do you want to start with? What I thought we were starting with your... Oh, sorry. It's my sound that we're starting yeah, with. Yeah, I thought we were starting with your sound. So I picked out one that is uh, birds. And it's... Um, we're, Zeb's going to play it, but listen for the, the very pretty little warbly sound. Is the I think it's the Uguisu bird. And that one I've come to really like here. Yeah, the birds are really nice. Yeah. What's your first favorite sound? So the one I'm going to go for is the shamisen, which is like an instrument that I guess is unique to Japan. I don't know if any other Asian country, I mean, maybe other Asian countries have something similar. But I really like the shamisen just because I think it's a pretty, like, unique sound to Japan, or at least when you hear it, you yeah, the probably thing that think I would Japan. Com- compare it to most, like, from our culture back home is like the dulcimer it's like a stringed instrument that's you don't quite like strum it the same way as a guitar yeah and usually i think you play it it. specifically with it on your lap Mm -hmm. but maybe i'm making that up well there's like a a comb kind of thing yeah you have like a little pick yeah but yeah it sounds really nice and this is actually some of my students um from the high school i work at this was at the school festival some of my students so my next sound is also outside but it's a man-made outdoor sound and it's the chirp of a crosswalk so anytime you're waiting at a light to walk across the street you hear this and I don't know sometimes it's a little annoying but it's also kind of comfy that it's always there and um, there's a couple different crosswalk sounds but I like this one the most I like that sound, but sometimes it's a little stressful because I hear it every morning when I go to work. And so (laughs) it does kind of make me think about getting up early to go to work Mm. when I hear that. And I guess that audio has some like cars driving by and bikes too. Yeah, but it is a fun sound. I do like it. And it's nice to hear in the city. And yes, it's not a bad sound, but sometimes when I hear it, I think about work. What's your next sound? So this one is actually from the Tokyo Pokemon Center. And it's a pretty 
Natsukashi sound or a very nostalgic sound for me and it's from one of the original Pokemon games and at one of the Pokemon centers in Tokyo they had this massive like wall and they had these little pinhole speakers and you could go up and put your ear up to the speaker and listen to like each you know sound coming out of the speaker and so this one is from one of the Pokemon video games and it's from the Pokemon Center in Tokyo. <laughs> Yeah, it was a nice, nice time, but I like that music a lot. Well, my next sound, I'm taking it back outside with some frogs, and these little guys are in a rice paddy, like a little rice field. I like those guys a lot. I just like them. It's just kind of like a nice, that's like one of the first, I feel like, sounds of like summer that I really heard. Like Yeah, it was like they're it's too hot for them to be out now, I feel like like I I, think so. now the cicadas are drowning them out. <laughs> but I guess it was the end like of very, spring. Yeah, early summer, end mm-hmm. of spring. You like heard the frogs and the rice paddies. It's a very nice sound. And your next sound? So this sound is outside, but not nature related. Um, this one is actually from when we went, and you also can hear this anywhere in the world, uh, almost. It's from the F1 Grand Prix weekend, where we went to go see that in Suzuka. Yeah, you um, can only hear the F1 Suzuka circuit sounds in Japan, though. That's true. <laughs> but the cars were just so impressive to hear in person, so that's what this is going to be from. Yeah, it was just really fun to be there. Like, it was a real, like, kind of experience. And when you watch it on TV, you know it's loud, but I feel like you don't... Like, in person, you can almost feel the sound. You know, kind of like at a concert, yeah. where if the speakers are loud enough, you're like, ooh. Yeah, and they're actually changing the dates of when they're going back to Japan. And so last year, and, like, previous years, it was in uh, October. And now it's going to be, I think, in April. Oh, yeah. I'll have to double check that, but it's like a whole different season. And so, yeah, if you're thinking about coming to the F1 race, maybe October didn't work, but yeah, maybe spring break is better for you. So I don't also, know. Also, that's going to be crazy because that, that'll be um, like cherry blossom time. Yeah, that's true. Or coinciding kind of with... It'll be wild. Yeah. But yeah, we, I guess we talked about this in that episode, but it rained out. And so we only saw like two laps. So I would love yeah. to go back. Yeah, I definitely want to go back. But anyway, my next sound is in Kyoto, and it's in Kiyomizu I don't know why I said Kyoto like that, but <laughs> Kyoto. <laughs> but it's um some wind chimes from the summer. Uh, so this was almost a year ago, actually, in when we were visiting Kiyomizu Temple. Yeah, I think actually that probably was pretty close to almost exactly a year ago because I I was looking through my photos for this episode and I forgot that we went to Kyoto in August. Yeah, because you had summer break. Yeah, it was like summer right break and I had like all the extra like days off because the school was closed. So we used, we had some like free time. So we went to Kyoto and yeah, it was so hot. <laughs> so <laughs> I forgot about that. And your last sound? So my last sound is just um, a nice little train chime because I we should talk about this more in another episode, but Japan does sounds in general really well yeah. with like little cues. And so you could hear it in like the train sounds and of course like going into stores and even like using ATMs. They do a really good job. Yeah, like we don't have the conveni- like convenience store entrance sound, but they always play. And like if you go into the convenience store and then you go out and then you go back in to return your trash, I always mm-hmm. feel bad because it's like plays a little like do 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 like every time. And it is one of those things that like, for instance, in Pokemon, and I think I mentioned this before too, that it's in a lot of video games and you think, oh, this is like a video game thing. It's part of a soundtrack. It's not real. But a lot of stores in Japan do that. And so every train also has this chime. Yeah. And this so the train ones are yeah, really nice. I 
particularly like that one because it sounds like you're in a Pokemon game. Oh, I think it just has it that nice. Have... It kind of has like a retro sound that where like the Thunderbird one is a little kind of like you feel you're like on a chariot or something. Oh it's yeah, little... the Thunderbird's like a little more grand. But yeah. yeah, they play like each train has their own signature entrance music. Yeah. And also when they're about to depart, they play it again mm-hmm. or like a different tune. So yeah, I don't remember exactly like where in Tokyo that one was, but yeah, it it's just has a really good one. The nice it's, little like ch- 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 yeah. under it too yeah. of the train tracks. It's a good sound. What was your final? My sound? last one is the cicadas, and so they're out kind of in full force right now. <laughs> And yeah, they're like a very signature summer sound. I think a lot of countries have their own cicadas and things. And we had cicadas growing up too. But I don't know, they sounded slightly different. Like ours, they didn't have the like wow, wow, wow sound yeah, as much. I don't <laughs> remember them being so loud back home. Yeah, they are kind of like deafening yeah, when like, you bike by in the trees. Yeah. We have occasions here where they truly are so like my ears will be ringing yeah, when I can't leave the talk area. To somebody. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, so they seem much more iconic here, I guess, than back home. And the sounds are different. And yeah, that's another classic, like Japanese film slash anime yeah, scene. True. It'll have the scene with like the really big clouds in the sky, which is real, like the massive tower. And then uh, the cicadas. Yeah, and I was reading that the clouds and the cicadas are, like, very summer things, and so I guess that makes sense why, in a cartoon or anime, they would have those seasonal indicators to tell you the season, because you can't, like, feel the temperature through the screen. Yeah, which is kind of an interesting, like, point. I've never really thought about it, but also, you know, like, haikus have seasonal words Mm -hmm. that the haiku author inserts certain words, and certain words are attached to different seasons. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting, too. They do the same, like, visual an audio cue as they do with like words that yeah. this word means this season but it is nice yeah. well yeah so email us your favorite japan sounds and maybe we'll find some more to play if you think of one that that we have in our audio library yeah definitely think in the future we should do more sounds or if you want a particular sound yeah maybe we'll go get it yeah you're welcome <laughs> to do a sound request <laughs> i yeah, almost like said request the sound, sound of request you can be pretty uh pretty random and specific too like the sound of zeb dropping a bag of chips in the 7-eleven or I'll never do that the sound of annie tripping on the sidewalk i don't know <laughs> i would I mean, do that in any country yeah but yeah just let us know what your favorite japan sounds are yeah so now i think we're gonna dive straight into a run through of our full year and we actually don't know each other's item yeah so today we just were gonna write down bullet points of like highlights of each month and then see if they overlap or if they don't so for august do you want to go first august is actually i have a couple bullet points for august because it was such a wild first month yeah so in a lot of months not in a lot of the months maybe but in some months it was really hard to narrow down to just one thing i tried my best so i'm gonna try and just stick to one thing okay because that's better than i have i have a couple so it's okay if uh, you have a couple um i I tried to be good um i can go first so mine honestly in august was just orientation in tokyo Hmm. and that's like a kind of strange one because we did a lot in august but i also tried to pick things i didn't think you would pick so maybe we wouldn't have as much overlap yeah um but just landing for the orientation in Tokyo was so surreal to like, one, I was like dealing with jet lag and honestly the orientation wasn't that fun and I didn't really go do anything cause they mm-hmm. were being like, Japan was still closed due to COVID. So they're pretty serious and they were telling us, you know, don't leave the hotel and yeah, don't get, you know, COVID. Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't get sick. Um, so I stayed in the hotel, which I know a lot of people don't and I won't judge you if you didn't. Um, <laughs> but now you don't have to. Um, but yeah, that was, it was just such a surreal experience to be like in the hotel and mm-hmm. like, just finally be, there. Yeah, like finally in Japan, like learning about the job I was about to do for the next year. And also just the quirky mornings, like going like to get breakfast real fast at a convenience store and stuff like that. It was just kind of a, yeah, it was just so surreal. And I yeah. could see Mount Fuji from my hotel room. Oh yeah. That, so that was cool. Pretty cool. Um, 
But yeah, well, not necessarily like a fun time in particular, but just a pretty I guess interesting very memorable. memory. Yeah. Yeah, August, I have a couple of things because, of course, it was like the time that I arrived and we got to spend time in Tokyo together for a little bit. So, like, the that's true. Specifically, well, there were so many highlights about Tokyo, but the Team Labs Planet art exhibit was really oh, cool. Yeah. Like a walkthrough art that exhibit. That was a lot of fun. Google, like, pictures of that or, like, go to that if you can because it was, it was very interesting to be able to, like, walk through an art exhibit um that <laughs> not like a museum like ones that you interact with the with the things yeah much um, better than a museum yeah <laughs> just different but the other thing that i put for august this is at the very end of the month but when we went to kyoto was one of the things that i put down it was so hot and that was like i would not recommend going to kyoto in the summer i wouldn't want to do it again but of course that was when you had time off so mm. I don't regret going. We got to go for Oban, which was cool. Um, but hiking Mount Hiai, Mount Hiezan, was a highlight of mine. And then the other part was um, being able to see the, I think it was like Daimonji fires. Yeah. So they lit like the five fires. And we talked about that in that episode, but yeah, that was my August highlight. Yeah. And I'm sure that every one of these highlights we mentioned in a past episode so if you hear something that piques your interest i'm sure that we have mentioned it in the episode in the corresponding month okay um, september we might overlap yeah probably what's yours i picked like our ride around noto me too yeah that was i think we did other cool stuff in september but we finally had our bikes and we had finally gotten to like kind of get into a riding groove and mm-hmm. this was our first kind it was of our first like, bike trip yeah, our first big bike trip around We spent around three Noto. days. We did the whole peninsula. And my favorite two parts of the trip were, one, I got to meet my favorite egg, Wakatamakun. That's true. The, the egg mascot. And then number two was, like, the third day from Wajima back. I thought that western side of the peninsula was the prettiest with the really dramatic rock cliffs. Oh, yeah. That one was that. really pretty. They had the Godzilla rock. They had the married rocks. We were also racing the typhoon home because... Remember, there's like a typhoon coming, yeah, the and everyone wind. was like, "You better make it home." Like, yeah, there was some headwind, so yeah. that was rough. But yeah, that was like a really cool. It's really pretty up there, so I'm glad we we did that trip. That was also the first time, like, because it was our first trip, it was the first experience of like vending machine and convenience store appreciation on a bike ride. Like now, I take it for granted, but we didn't have to worry about like, oh, what if we run out of water? Because there's always going to be like a vending machine or a convenience yeah, store. That is a truly magical part about Japan that like back home, you know, you sometimes you just run out of water cause you're in the middle of nowhere and yeah. there really aren't stores or like you anything. You need like a gas station or if you're in like a rural area, we would look for like churches cause sometimes they wouldn't have their pumps locked yeah. and you could like go use the church. Which is always so rude. Church. Sometimes they would like take the handles off or they would like <laughs> cut their water off. And it's like, I get on. it. Like, like they're paying for the water bill, but yeah, it was so yeah. nice when you find a church that had like the spigot in the parking lot and you yeah. could like refill your bottle. But yeah, That's true. we don't have to worry about that in Japan. Yeah. We have to so pay for it. The bike ride around Noto, pretty special. Yeah. So for October, that was another big month because that was, one, it was our anniversary month. Yeah. I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Zeb had a really nice anniversary trip planned. But before the anniversary, did you know that our Shirakawa Go trip was also during that month? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was busy. Yeah, it was. So are you picking the Shirakawa Go trip? I don't know. I really... It's an honorable mention because the anniversary trip was like a highlight of the year. So Shirakawa Go doesn't top that. But I still think that our bike ride to Shirakawa Go was the prettiest single day bike ride. Wow. The okay. prettiest, like, because we woke up... So I have a video on my YouTube if you want to see it. Um, but when we woke up in Shirakawa Go and got to see the town kind of in the early morning before our ride like starting then and then the ride back through the like the show river valley that was like the prettiest single day i feel like that's true that was really nice yeah my thing was yeah just the anniversary weekend I yeah that was like really nice we stayed at lake biwa and mm-hmm. a nice um onsen hotel yeah and then we got to obviously from my sound that i picked towards the beginning of the episode i liked the f1 grand prix weekend so that was fun yeah that was mine. That was also my favorite dinner so far. The kaiseki dinner oh, that we yeah, had in Lake Biwa. It was like a multi-course with the little small plates. I mean, that's what and kaiseki is. And that one was is. particularly good. 
Yeah. I've had like some of the small course meals where that maybe there's like a few things that I wasn't super into, but I can't remember a single thing from that one that. It also wasn't helped good. that trout and chestnuts were in season, and we like both That's of those true. things. But yeah. it was also the most expensive dinner we've had. I mean, it was our anniversary, so we were treating ourselves. But yeah, I can't really compare it to our typical budget dinners. Yeah. But it was very special. Well, what about November? I have leaves <laughs> oh, okay. as my highlight. So the fall foliage, fall is my favorite time of year anyway, but it's so much later in Japan. Like the whole year of seasons is like shifted slightly from what I'm used to on the, like in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. It, That's true. It's very similar, but everything's like a month later. Yeah. It's shifted and things are like a little more intense. Yeah. That's I feel true. Like. There was like, like they're a little more pronounced. Yeah. Like sometimes in America, or at least in North Carolina, like you see the big like key, like the leaves will change color, but sometimes the temperature is like a little more blurred. Mm-hmm. Where here, yeah, it's kind of like yeah, a the more winters are like pronounced. way snowier, but the summers are way hotter. It's so yeah. crazy. So mine in November is a little adjacent to leaves. Uh, I was just gonna say the weather. Yeah. Because I can remember like I was looking back through my camera roll on my phone just looking for pictures to talk about in this episode and specifically in november i remember the weather being like really nice because it was it was like on the colder side of chilly so brisk so brisk (laughs) yeah but there was there were still some warm days Mm -hmm. and even then it felt good when the sun was out yeah and even then like the cold days were not um not like too cold like it was kind of like you wait. could wear long sleeve jersey but you didn't need gloves yeah or like shoe covers so you were kind of like Fall still very best. comfortable yeah the weather as an honorable mention i also liked being able to go to the honor to the open house at your school so that was oh, the yeah, time I forgot when, about that. and you had like a fashion show that was kind of like a joke fashion show where the teachers yeah. and the students dressed up and it was fun but then there was like a more serious where the students would display the things they'd been working on all year yeah i'm pretty sure that's where my music clip yeah the shamisen music clip came from and there was music and there was art and there was like even ikebana like the flower arranging yeah and they had food for sale so yeah i just really liked being able to have a glimpse into your school that's true i forgot about that yeah so december your birthday month yeah (laughs) is that your highlight um you're not a big birthday person but not necessarily, but I guess I like my birthday for me. Like, it feels <laughs> weird when people celebrate me, so I don't necessarily like all the attention that comes with birthdays. I guess. But like personally, I appreciate like what the birthday means. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's like a weird like I don't really want a huge party and I don't want a lot of attention, but I kind of want to do what I want to do on my birthday. You know. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of that. Um, it's really the holiday period, which I do kind of consider starting with my birthday and going through <laughs> New Year's Eve, just because that's the second half of December. Yeah. So for December, I put kind of the holiday period. So from December 17th through the 31st, just because it's, it's so cozy and I have like a lot of good, again, like Natsukashi, like nostalgic memories tied up in that period of the year. Mm-hmm. It reminds me a lot of just like childhood and just kind of because you're also like off school, so it's the yeah. holidays. Um, yeah, so you're just kind of hanging out at home. And so I have a lot like, of like good memories tied to that. Yeah, I was a little worried with it being our first. So it's not our first Christmas away from home because we typically, like with our work back in America, we would have a lot of time off in the winter. And so we would travel a lot. So it's not actually our first Christmas away from family, but it was our first like I don't know our longest time away from family so I was concerned with it feeling more lonely but I was very pleasantly surprised by how generous like the new friends that we made here were like yeah for example some friends that we had recently met invited us to their house for Christmas Uh, Um, some other people in the community I got to go to a woman's house and she let me try on a uh, wedding kimono Mm -hmm. and that was very generous and then we got to do like cooking classes with people um, we even, another, another man, in, like a neighbor, na- a neighbor of ours who we met through the volunteer language class, he took us out to dinner for your birthday, which is like around that time. But so. she didn't know it was my birthday. No. So it wasn't like for my birthday. But it was, you but, know, like yeah. a holiday time. 
and yeah. yeah and it was nice that it was a white christmas but that's true so we got so much snow that there was a lot of snow so it was yeah that was like a fun experience and yeah i've had actually a few birthdays and christmases away so i wasn't like too worried about it and yeah. i just enjoyed it it was nice like i saw a photo and I think I was sitting on the couch watching Cyclocross, and we had like our dinky little Christmas tree set up, oh, and like yeah. the gifts we had bought for each other. And there was a lot of snow outside. And, and because yeah, of the time difference, really we cozy. like had our own cozy Christmas, and then the next day we called back home. So it was kind of like a very long Christmas. We could call our family. And then also for December. <laughs> wow, you really picked a bunch of moments I, December for was, each month. was big. But I, every month we had. <laughs> Every month you're like, and then the third honorable mention is... Sorry, but I ran my first half marathon. It was very nice. I figured that that's what you would pick. No, it wasn't my, like, number one thing, but... Hmm. Okay, we can move on. Sorry. Okay. (laughs) January. January. Um, For me, honestly, it was just kind of the... I don't don't know how to explain it. Just, like, the quirky time of the holidays being (laughs) at school. Yeah. Because, like, technically, like, no students were there because it was still winter break, but we all had to go back to work again. And it was just funny because there were some days it was, like, dumping snow outside. Mm -hmm. So it was just me and, like, some teachers hanging out in the teacher's room while it's, like, storming and, like, lightning and snowing. Because the students aren't there. Yeah, and I drank a lot of coffee because we had, like, the coffee machine. And, yeah, it was just kind of like a cozy little funny, like, quirky time. Like, it was like, (laughs) what am I really doing here? Yeah. Well, I had uh, big snows as my highlight. Yeah, January was pretty rowdy. Yeah. It was, there was so much snow. It was really kind of like, I don't know, I felt like a kid where you're like, wow, this is, it was just like a wonderland outside because it shuts down everything. This place is very equipped for snow, but just... (laughs) There were still people driving around getting stuck out there. But. Yeah, I mean, the mail was still getting delivered, but it just... Yeah, and kids still went to school when the school opened back like, up. It was snowing so much so quickly that the plows couldn't, like, plow it in time. Mm-hmm. So it just was, like, interesting. And I just haven't been in a place that snows that much in a really long time. Yeah. February? So my favorite thing in February, I think, was specifically when we went to Hokkaido... Was the Josen K. Onsen. That's mine, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we had a Sapporo snow festival trip. We flew up to Hokkaido for our first time. Mm-hmm. And the point was to go to the snow festival, and we did, and it was really nice. But the, yeah, the kind of side quest <laughs> ended up being the highlight where we went to an hour away, this town called Josen K. And yeah. yeah, we stayed there. And I had seen online that there was a lantern like snow illumination which is Mm -hmm. why we went because i know that annie likes lanterns Mm -hmm. um so that's why we went and i I didn't really have high expectations and i also happened to notice that the buses the timing so in the end it would have been fine we could have taken a bus from Sapporo there and back Mm -hmm. but we stayed in a ryokan with an onsen overnight just to make things convenient and that was yeah that was just really nice because sitting in so they had an outdoor tub and sitting in that while it was snowing was just like a really, I don't know, it was a pretty like special moment. We also got to catch up with a fellow jet again, like a another guy who works on the jet program. So he lives true. up in Hokkaido. Yeah. And we got to see him for the F1 race. And then again, and that yeah. was fun. And the bakery in, that, in Sapporo was amazing. Do you remember the bakery? You forgot? So back in Sapporo, like in the main town, uh, actually... Was it Sapro? Anyway, it was the bakery where you walk no, in and you... No, that was Josen K. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was well, Josen K. Onsen. You take the, like, any bread you want with the tongs out of this, like, shelf, and it just felt like this. you open this, like, treasure chest of bread. And you can... and I won bread in a treasure chest. Yeah, we bought so much that they gave us, like, a little coupon kind of key thing that you put in a gacha machine, and when you twist the gacha that comes out, it's, like, a, a free bread, and you get to get a bonus bread. Yeah. So that was February. And what, what about did March? What you like about March? Well, I really liked... Uh, okay, you're going to get mad because I have two things again. No, I'm not going to get mad. I just thought as you were like, we're picking one thing and we're going to run through it. I said highlights, sure. plural. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick as many as you want as long as they're like in a two-minute period. <laughs> okay. Rapid fire. 
But anyway, uh, okay, so Cherry Blossoms was my number one because they really are, like, worth the hype, especially after such a long winter. When the first, when I saw the first trees in full bloom, I was like, oh my gosh, trees. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was actually looking at it, though, and I think it's pretty interesting to note that the winter felt, I think just because the snow was so intense, the winter felt like we were just in the middle of this, like, never-ending. I didn't feel like that. I just like remember that. being so cold, and, like, the winter felt really long. You, you also just hate winter anyway. Yeah, but I, I looked at photos, and from, like, it early December. It was only two December, months long. Yeah. Well, you were just calling it a long winter. You were, like, the snow, like, the cherry blossoms well, after just the long after, winter. Well, just after, like, a cold <laughs> period of time. Yeah, it was only really, like, two months. I mean, I don't think it's a long winter any more than, like, any other year. Okay. But just after snow... It's nice to be like, wow, I missed you, flowers. But a lot of things happened in March because our bike trip to Fukui was also really fun. And my first like friend from America visited, my high school, middle oh, school yeah. friend. So yeah, it was a big, big month again. Yeah. What about you? Well, so that was the month I got my new road bike and yeah. formally joined Japan Pro Tour team and then had my first race in Shizuoka. I had that too. <laughs> I, I bet you did. I have a long list over here. <laughs> so that was, um, that's probably my favorite thing was doing that like race in Shizuoka because it was the yeah. first time I traveled in a long time to do a bike race. And it's, I guess, arguably at the highest level here in Japan. So it was a pretty unique experience. And I didn't know what to expect. So even though it was like rainy and honestly a little miserable because the course was terrible. <laughs> And there was so much rain. Even though I hated it, it was my favorite part. <laughs> well, it was just such a unique experience, yeah. which kind of like kicked off me racing with that team. So that's yeah. why it's probably a highlight for March. April was wild. Yeah. So I bet you have a long list for I April really too. I really do. <laughs> oh no. No, it's honestly when I was making this list, I was just feeling so lucky, you know, because every month I was like, wow. We did this really cool thing again. But yeah, April was was a big highlight of the year because my family came and visited. So I, I have I do still miss two of my sisters who I'll see them when I go back to America at the end of this month. But yeah, they, they weren't able to come. Two of your sisters. Yeah, two of them. Yeah, you're like I miss I miss two of them out of the four. <laughs> <laughs> I miss all four of my sisters, obviously. But two of them I didn't get to see in April, but the other two did get to come and my mm-hmm. parents. And so, yeah, in April, we, it was for their spring break. And so we met them in Tokyo and that was fun in itself. And then from there, we got to do a whole whirlwind tour, which that podcast episode, I think it's fun to listen to because we took the speakers or we took the recorder out of the room and kind of recorded real time a lot. Yeah. I think in particular, that was a, a good episode. Some great food, giant udon bowls some fun touristy things huh. but yeah it was fun to also like show them to experience like kanazawa together um and just kind of show them around where we've been yeah i think so i figured you were gonna pick when your family visited mm-hmm. i also thought you might pick the toyama tulip festival i have that written down too <laughs> and that's the month we got a car uh, yeah but i specifically put um that's the first weekend like i had a good race mm. in the japan pro tour so that was like when we went to Gunma, which was a pretty fun trip. It was our first time going over there. And yeah, I finished a race there. And we got to see that cool museum yeah. on the drive home. The so. museum was in Niigata. And yeah, I actually just finished finally like editing this video on my YouTube. And the school's included in that if you want to see it. But that was, it was an old elementary school that the rural town didn't have enough students to stay open. And they, instead of shutting it down totally, an artist converted it into like a walkthrough museum. Yeah. So now we're at May. And I bet I can guess your highlight. Um, mine, if I'm going to skip over what I think is yours, my other one was going to Kiso and doing... So the biking was really beautiful, but also just... We drove different places and walked and um, like the blue, blue river in the Otero yeah. Valley was so like shocking because the bike riding was really beautiful. I was shocked. I was. I mean, because the bike ride itself had been really beautiful with just the Alps in the background. I guess they're the Japanese Alps. But then 
after dinner, we were like, well, let's just drive to this highly reviewed valley, you know, like this kind of, this is a scenic spot on Google reviews. And I had like moderate expectations, but the water was like so turquoise. And so that was my favorite off the bike view. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. What did you think I was, I'm going to pick? When our friend from college came and visited. Yeah, so that's actually, that was going to be on there that I thought you might pick when Kyle came to visit. Oh, obviously, so I was happy that Kyle came. Our buddy Kyle came to stay with us, which was a lot of fun. So it was good to catch up with him and kind of get to experience a bit of Japan with him and do some bike riding. And yeah, that was really fun. My honorable mention was the Mount Antake hill climb. Oh. The race that we were in Kiso for. Because yeah. it was so good. It was just a lot of fun, yeah. We I rode up the climb and it was really pretty, but I was so glad I wasn't like racing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, well you don't like climbing that much, so. Yeah, and just not like an extended climb, just being yeah. able to ride it at a fun pace. I did enjoy that. Yeah, but in general, yeah, having Kyle come to visit was a good time. Now we're in the summer months. I know, only two months left. So June. I don't know. I I really enjoyed the Hyakumon Goku Festival like here in Kanazawa, but it wasn't I guess I had higher expectations for it <laughs> than what it was, and so that maybe that kind of messed me up, mm. but it was so crowded that it was a little hard to like see in some places and get around. So on one hand, it was fun to be part of something that was like a big crowd again. Um I mean, we weren't here during like the thick of COVID, but I guess it was the first time that it had happened in so long. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but it was, it was like a little too crowded for my like preference. Uh, but my like favorite part, I guess, of June was going to Lake Shima and the onsen town that we got to see. Yeah. Is that your highlight? Um, it's, it's my honorable mention, I guess. What's your highlight? I thought that Shima onsen was really nice and it was like very fun to see the like potential onsen that the Spirited Way bridge is based yeah. on, even though that bridge is, like, everywhere <laughs> in Japan. Um, I think, I guess to sound like a broken record, that was the highest rank and longest Japan Pro Tour race that I had a good result in. So mm -hmm. that was, like, a really kind of, I don't know, I guess, like, good, like, reaffirming experience that my fitness is pretty good and I could do that level of competition and so that was like a very, I guess, relieving or very good moment to finish that race. And then... Yeah, it's always nice to finish a race that you like feel proud about. Yeah. So that one was like a really good one. Um, but yeah, then I was going to throw Shimansen in there just so I didn't sound like the only thing I care about is bike racing and well. <laughs> <laughs> riding bikes. But So July, just last month, yeah. um, it was a really hot... <laughs> month but it still didn't keep us from standing around a fire <laughs> outside so there were at least one time where we went to a barbecue and we were like oh yeah like standing over a barbecue fire that's like when july started to be hot was that barbecue you i feel like so? the first half of july wasn't too wasn't, bad like, sweltering no but then that like the ocean day mm -hmm. weekend and then from then on that's when it was like, oh, it's really hot now. Yeah. It was really fun, though. That was one of my highlights was... So we got to do a barbecue with some friends and meet a ton of new people. Um, it, it was, like, at the beach, but it was in a little barbecue area away from the ocean. So it was nice because you were outside, but the sand, you weren't, like, in sand. <laughs> That's true. Because sand doesn't really mix well with food. But, yeah, so no. we got to... <laughs> We got to do the barbecue, and then we also did a barbecue here in our neighborhood, and that was kind of different because we weren't really we were like digging into the like the deep tracks. Yeah, sorry, of the July. Like... Sorry, the deep tracks. They were fun. I mean, yeah, it was fun. I just love food. We got to taste a bunch of different like cultures' food too. Yeah, that's true. What is your highlight of July? So mine um, was honestly so we had our. Nagano trip which was really good and we got to go to Nagano again and the bike riding there was really nice mm -hmm. um but again not to sound like all I do is ride bikes is I honestly think that seeing the premiere of Miyazaki's new film in theaters was I had that done too 
Uh, <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> um, that was just like a really pretty like special moment because I think that younger me, like kind of late elementary school through early high school, like Spirited Away was one of my all time favorite films. And I can remember like renting that. Honestly, I think so. I've like, I've looked into this and I think the Miyazaki um, film Nausicaa, but I saw the crappy American made version, which is the reason that Miyazaki doesn't allow any countries to make cuts of his film anymore. I saw that when I was like really young on VHS. And so Miyazaki has been like a pretty influential person in me liking Japan. And I can remember getting spirited away, like rented on DVD and I just watched it like over and over and over again, like over a whole weekend. Um, so I just remember like that moment. So I think younger me would have been pretty thrilled to know that adult me got to go see the premiere of a Miyazaki film in theaters. I guess I would call it kind of like a bucket list event, except it wasn't really a bucket list event because I just never really thought it would happen. Hmm. Like I just never thought I would be in Japan to see a premiere of one of his films in theaters. Mm -hmm. But since it all kind of came together and I got to do it, I think that's a pretty, it know, was pretty really special fun. moment. And I also really like movie theaters, and so that was fun to be able to go to one again. Yeah, and that was like the first time we had been to a movie theater here in Japan, too. Yeah. So just that whole experience of, yeah, we got to get popcorn, we got a yeah. fun peach-flavored soda thing. <laughs> it was just a good, good experience. So. so I mentioned the the barbecues, but my favorite part about July was the bike race in Nagano. Yeah, I was going to say probably doing the Shimano Bikers Festival. Yeah, it was the first time in a year that I got to ride on a trail even though it was on my gravel bike and yeah. I really have missed mountain biking. And yeah. so it wasn't mountain biking, but it was like, you know, just a fun reminder. I haven't raced in a year and I used to race a lot. And so it was, I, I used to that. be a racer. <laughs> I was after no, it. just like, it was like a big, uh, hobby kind of like, uh, more than a hobby. I mean, it was just a hobby, but it was like a goal. Like it was, a. I don't know. I would race often. Yeah. So, I mean, it was definitely a hobby, but it's also a bit of like a part-time job. It's a that, lifestyle. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, without being like, yeah, it dumb, sounds like but. annoying to say that, but we probably often have taken cycling a little too seriously. In our I have lives, enjoyed but. not having such an in intense focus on racing mm -hmm. and just riding my bike. And I do really like touring and exploring on my bike. So it's not like, you know, I've been miserable <laughs> by any yeah. means but it was fun to like be at a start line again and be on some trail yeah and now we're now we're this month full circle august yeah. you better start making your highlight reel start jotting it down oh i know getting ready no gratitude is a is a very good daily practice to have <laughs> yeah i think that it is like it's it's really fun to look back like i enjoyed looking back through my phone and looking at it and it really did i don't think i had like i had it only been a year, so I don't think I'd forgotten anything, but just kind of like looking at the pictures and being like, oh yeah, like we got to I'd do forgotten that. like how close everything was, like how much we packed in, you It was know? a hectic year, and honestly now I think being here like a year later, it really doesn't feel like it's been a year. Mm -hmm. I think it, the this past year was so fast. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's already August again is... Because I guess our mentality, too, was like, well, we don't know how long we'll be here. I mean, we still don't know. It's kind of yeah. the fun part. But we were like, we may only have a year, <laughs> so we better say yes to everything. Yeah, we tried to pack a lot in, which was obviously, I guess, if you just listened to all this, we kind of did pack a lot in. <laughs> well, but... so what was, like, that was all the the highlight fun stuff. What was, like, the hardest parts about the year? If you had to pick, like... So mine are like kind of the dull parts. So taxes were not fun. Like trying to figure out how to do yeah. Japan, Japan and America tax stuff. Um, and also like, yeah, just, just all that. Taxes are never fun. And also um, just general language barrier issues. Like sometimes it does get frustrating to not be able to just make my own doctor's appointments without the help of somebody to call yeah um things like that yeah i think mine like if i was going to be really nitpicky i think maybe there are some like cultural differences that 
aren't like necessarily an issue, but sometimes I guess over like a really long period of time, they can be a little like grating. Like I mentioned to you that sometimes I don't like eating natto at school because mm-hmm. even though I like natto, sometimes it can be a little annoying when, you know, the fifth person comes up to you and they're like, wow, you're eating natto. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm eating natto. And they're like, I never see foreigners eat natto. And they're like, so like flabbergasted. Yeah. So it is kind of annoying having a lot of those same, like, kind of routine... You said it would be, like, if in America, if, like, you saw somebody... I guess, what does a non-American look like? But if you saw someone who you knew wasn't American eating a hot dog, and yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, like, tube you meat? processed <laughs> tube meat? Like, I, I Some can't Some people think it's it. gross, but you can actually eat it. Yeah, it's just jelly hot, like, jelly pigs? Like, oh my god. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, some of those kind of routine conversations can be a little grating, like, the whole, like... But uh, and this is something all foreigners complain about, like oh, like where do you live? Like oh, we live here in Ishikawa. And then that one doesn't you have bother me whole conversation. because my language skills are so poor that they probably wouldn't assume that I can like make it. Which is fine, <laughs> and like I definitely I understand that being in Japan, we are so like obviously, obviously not foreign. Japanese. But it is it is it is a little grating sometimes to have those kind of same routine mm. like they're very impressed that you're a foreigner conversations right which is fine um but i think if i was going to nitpick even more specific sometimes it is some like specific cultural differences about even like outdoors and exercise mm. like sometimes explaining like when someone asks you what one of your hobbies is and you tell them like oh i ride bikes it like one there's language barrier so it's hard to explain mm-hmm. but then sometimes explaining like your passion for exercise as an adult Sometimes I think they think is a little kind of like, mm. like, oh, that's like a little like. I guess, yeah. I don't know, because just like, like your passion should be something more like job oriented, maybe. Yeah, or maybe like career yeah. oriented. So that there's some sense. funny things about that that I think Americans are pretty good at. But also some of that's culturally like where we were back home. All of our friends where we lived were cyclists. They like all kind of understood what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, we definitely had some neighbors that did not like bikes. So. No, that's true. But just kind of when we talked to people, they like they got it. Mm-hmm. But here in Japan, even sometimes when I'm talking to the other cyclists, I feel like they don't. There's like a kind of disconnect, mm. a, like a little bit between yeah, I guess what that's we're nice talking about. Why you have like the guys on your road team because they get it. I mean, they. Yeah they spend as much time as you do trying to be fast as as fast as possible i guess yeah and ride yeah another kind of like small thing is house insulation issues are kind of oh yeah it's pretty comical yeah (laughs) because in the winter the house is freezing and then because we have like single pane glass there yeah there actually is somebody living below us now but before there wasn't and so it was just like the floors you had to wear slippers because the floors were like freezing mm-hmm. well now it's summer and you have to wear slippers because the floor's sticky yeah so when you walk around you're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, even though we have the ac on but yeah it's always so hot inside so yeah they're like i mean overall i think the pros outweigh the cons oh, definitely but there are some like pretty interesting things that you just kind of have to and so the insulation isn't one of them like you could live in a nicer place or spend more money right (laughs) yeah we could be in a better apartment there are some things culturally that you just kind of have to be okay with putting up with this isn't a cultural thing but one kind of like pet peeve of mine is when people talk about how they became fluent from like watching anime or they'll be like yeah i just immersed myself in the culture and then i just became fluent and i'm always like I don't know. I I just feel like language study, maybe some people can just not try at all. But when people are like, oh, have you just been like soaking up the language? And I'm like, yes, but I've been like, you know, constantly trying every day. Yeah. To like Like, study. Every day is a bit of a struggle. Even though, and my like, you know, trajectory has not been, (laughs) I could be, I could be studying harder and better. Well, I I think that's the thing too, sometimes that people don't admit when they're like, I became like, jlpt like yeah, it just one happened. in a year <laughs> and it's like well that person went to a language school and they studied like 10 to 12 hours a day and so yeah sometimes stuff like that yeah sometimes i'll like beat myself up about like we've been here a whole year and i still can't like go to the post office without struggling on but the flip then... <laughs> side though i'll meet some alts that have lived here for multiple years and they're like yeah i gave up learning the language like i'm not <laughs> Like, I don't study, I'm not trying to learn, I don't want to learn. I mean, and that's fine, too, like, whatever you want to do. But, yeah, Yeah. it always, whenever people are like, yeah, I just, 
I just didn't do anything and it just naturally happened. I'm always yeah. like, really? Like, I don't know. It just doesn't cynical. seem like a very healthy. True. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's about all the negativity. <laughs> yeah. We'll go through, but yeah, just kind of a, I guess as like a healthy dose of realism. It has been obviously amazing because we just rattled off like 30 minutes of highlights, but yeah. I wanted to include like it's some kind of like an annoying parts. Instagram audio reel. Yeah. Here are the <laughs> top 30 things we did last year. Yeah, but, but overall I'm very like proud of us, I guess for for making it. We're really doing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a pretty cool thing to make a move to a foreign country and stay afloat. Yeah, and but. very grateful also for like the generosity of of the people that we've met that are Japanese here and also I know we kind of like make fun of like oh well don't just only hang out with other foreigners but the like generosity of other jets and other foreigners here has been really nice to have and like when our car battery died we could call one of them up and they helped us get that going and yeah that was that was pretty tight stuff like that thanks rowan yeah, yeah. well do you word have a word of the, of the week? week yeah so i guess i'll go first sure mine is kairi miru which is to look back on oh to reminisce yeah yeah isn't that nice yeah like kairu is like return and mm-hmm. miru is look so it's kind of a compound word yeah it's a verb yeah just mash them together kairi miru to look back at what's your word mine is oto mm. which like is husband sound oh i'm thinking oto <laughs> yeah so it's just sound um yeah. so if you've been listening to this listen to a bunch of sounds <laughs> so <laughs> that's why i picked it yeah maybe we should add some sounds to our podcast more i like the immersion yeah it is nice well i hope that you enjoyed our rambling this week and maybe reminiscing with us but yeah email us if you have any questions or if you have anything that you want to share about japan i would love to hear it yeah definitely and don't forget to if you heard something in a month that piqued your interest you're welcome to just email us and ask us about it or you can go back to like the corresponding month and there's probably a podcast where we kind of like go more in depth about that topic that we covered um so yeah be sure to go back and re-listen or listen to the corresponding episode if you'd like to hear more we'll see you guys next week yeah thanks for listening bye bye